so in this part we are going to look at the uh, speech, speech recognition uh, so we have the data from the kegel uh, website uh, so i have downloaded it here and extracted it so this is the train folder go into the audio directory let it load there are several files under this audio directory uh, and each of this folder has its own uh, audio files i'll open up one of the folder so you can see different wave files in here and it's listed under the name yes so what it means is uh, this dot wave uh, file would would be a sound saying yes so there are several uh, files over here similarly there are several types of uh, sound files also present so we will start uh processing uh, those files and uh, so in this part we will be seeing how we can use this uh, files to feed it to any machine learning algorithm right so uh, and machine learning algorithm would understand uh, numbers in particular right and this is the wave file uh, there are several architectures machine learning architectures which can directly take in the raw input wave files uh, but for most other purposes we need to process it the algorithm that we are going to use here is called mfcc uh, you know, please look up online uh, about mfcc algorithm if you want to know more about uh, more about the algorithm in details uh, the package that we are going to use in particular to process the wave file is librosa so make sure you have that installed um so we will start with uh, getting the train data path so for me it's data train and audio data train audio sorry so and we are going to take two audio uh, types mainly yes and no so this is yes so under this train data data train audio we have a yes folder so this is yes and similarly we'll go with no so just making sure no has some files in there so that, that is the no file so no so once we have this uh, folders ready i mean the path to path to the files ready um we would want to get the uh, files in there right so for that the very good library would to use would be os uh, let's first define the main function so in this main uh, what we will have is uh, we will like for now we'll let's pass uh, let's create another function called read audio which would take in an argument as um like parent path in audio type path so what this parent path is it's the parent directory in which that audio particular audio type file is located so for us it would be again data train audio and the audio type path would be yes and then we could join those and iterate over it right so i'm just making it as a function so that we have several other data audio, audio data types right so we could use this function over and over to get the file names 
right so um, let's just initialize this as wave files so this would be just the path to that wave files uh, and we would want to return this wave files <laughs> let's comment it which would be list of paths to file of audio type path to parent directory specific audio type so writing down the description yeah. so now that we have that in so now we can iterate over the directory so for dir path comma so you can do that using this uh, os dot walk so for in os dot walk and then uh, we the folder we want to walk in is the specific audio type right so it would be parent pl path plus audio type so uh, just so the directory that we want to walk in is for example yes so this is the directory we would want to search in right so how we can do that is uh, using this os dot path dot join we could also use the string concatenation but uh, this us os dot path dot join is smarter way to join two paths so we'll join the parent path and audio type path in uh, so for now we we have these files uh, in there uh, which would be an array of all the files uh, uh, present in that directory in, in, in that subdirectory so uh, what we can do is we could iterate over that uh, files uh, files list and see if we have the wave files in that so for that we would want to match the file right so uh, good library to match the file types is uh, from fn match so from fn match import fn match so here so i'm just going to do a list comprehension and which would be a f for f in files so i'm just iterating over the files uh, list that we got got from this os dot walk if f and match show that it ends with wave what we are doing is uh, this star is a wildcard which could match any name so let's go in this no folder so this string that you see before this dot wave uh, will be matched by this dot uh, be, will be matched by this star and then dot wave will followed after it will be followed after it so this wave files would be a list of all the files in that particular directory so in in our case in in case of no it would be 0 a 9 9 dash 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 no hash dot underscore 0 dot wave till the very end uh, 
if it matches the wave extension in case there are files which doesn't make uh, doesn't end with that wave uh, those are not important file for us right so you would want to ignore those files so that's what we have been doing so instead of just storing the name we would also want to store the whole path to it right so again we would do os.path.join um, dir path comma f right so now that we have uh, the wave files to uh, it's just matter of returning the uh, wave files right so now we can use this function over and over again in the main to get the uh, different uh, different wave files for yes and no right so uh, in fact it could be used for any read audio the parent path would be train data oh, and we want yes right so yes let's name it this here train data of path and yes path which would make much more sense no, no path train data path and yes path okay so same same thing goes for no files okay now that we have the no files uh we would want to process uh so let's first print out yes files just to make sure uh, let's just print out the first three names in the yes files so it this remember this is a list that is being written from this uh, 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 this function so let's just print out and see what we get what we expected it's still running so this these are the first three files that it found in the yes folder with the the dot wave extension so it's doing what we are expecting so now we we should be uh, using this uh, individual files and processing them so we'll be converting these wave files uh, to the mfcc to its mfcc version right so you'll be using the uh, librosa folder for that so let's create a function which could crawl over all the individual files i mean which could process the individual files and then return the mfcc for them so we file so And what we want to return is uh it would be an n numpy array uh concur uh, so uh, what we want to return is the numpy uh, array of the mfcc and was thinking to append the uh, label as well to it right so i'm just going to write down the label uh, let's figure it out as in when we go so okay so first first thing first so we'll be converting uh, the wave file uh, to the mfccs uh, so what we can do is x comma sample rate equal to librosa we'll be using the librosa module and 
loading the wave file the first step to load the wave file uh, and yes, i remember this rest type equal to kaiser uh, this is just uh, just one way of loading the wave files quickly uh, so you can ignore this rest type if you want but this certainly improves the performance at least it did for me so mcfs uh, c let's call it mfc c s -S equal to uh, librosa dot feature dot mfcc so it will be y equal to x sample rate equal to sample rate and mfcc equal to uh, now this is the variable part so what uh, this is is it create the uh, it creates the number of uh, samples of mfcc uh, we'll just keep it 40 for now uh, this, this is this would be certainly a hyperparameter for us to tune to see how much how many samples we want okay so let's print fccs for now oh, in fact let's do a preprint and num so we would be needing uh, numpy also let's input tensorflow while we are here stf also import from sorry from print import pretty print so let's pretty print this to see uh, how this will look like right so let test that out with what was that function called mfcc right so mfcc uh, it would be uh, the wave file we can pass in is wave yes files in the very first wave file for that um and then label equal to for now let's just pass zero comma one I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about this label later on so let's run this and see what would be this mfcc yeah Running this is a little bit slow at this point. Yes, so it spitted out an array uh, uh, with huge set of numbers. Let's see what shape it is. Uh, let's convert it into MFCCS. equal to np dot array mfccs mfccs dot shape let's see so it would be a two dimensional array uh, with the shape of approx uh, i mean uh, 40 cross this is the variable value it depends on the uh, uh, and depends on the uh, audio file that we have input uh, we, we have in the input so what we can do is we can uh, take the mean uh, across that mfccs file and 
so that we have only one dimension so so now this input tensor would be of the shape 40 See. Yes, so now we have the shape of 40 right so since now that we have that uh, now coming to the label part right so let's have a single dimension label in here and then this label we can use to concatenate so mscs data mscc data let's call it mscc data equal to np dot concatenate on getting it um it would be this mfccs comma label so before before that just make sure this label is a numpy array so it need not to be but let's do the sanity uh, so array label because if it was a uh, scalar value it wouldn't concatenate so uh, let's check for mfcc data shape converted to scalar index um what did we do wrong okay so concatenate would take in a oh, tuple instead of argument so let's see So as you can see, uh, it's appending it with the label at the very end and that's why the shape has changed from 40 to 41. So that's that extra column that we are getting uh, at the very end. Okay, so now uh, that we have this MFCC data, let's, let's return this MFCC data. Uh, so MFCC data uh, would be equal to uh, so NPRA with MFCC data appended with label column so this is the label that we want to use it's an npra uh, wave file is path to the wave file and 
what this does in kernel. Compends it with the label. Sorry about that. So once we have this label uh, append into this MCF MFCC data, we can use this uh, uh, function to process our uh, yes files and no files to get the yes file and uh, yes data and by data, right? So let's do that yes data equal to so what we want to do is so yes files is the list of wave files right we want to go over that each and every uh, wave files for the uh, in that yes files and convert it into mc mfcc format uh, and store them in the list right so uh, let's create the this comprehension so mfcc um, let's for now ignore so for wave f in uh, yes files wave file equal to uh, wave f and label equal to so for now uh, we'll have one as a label for uh, yes file and zero as a label for uh, no file right. uh, no, i mean one would indicate yes and zero would indicate no so we have this yes and no <laughs> let's make sure we have it right here so we have the yes data and no data uh, uh, let's if, if let's visualize one of the people ts data and let's uh, let's print out the first thing uh, first value this is just to make sure uh, that maybe I'm not, not making any mistake uh, so far. So, so, not made any mistake so far. So, that would be the first wave file that is processed and written as the NP array. Oh, let's see, it's an NP array or not. Yeah, so it would be an NP array uh, set of values with 41 columns. The first 40 values would be the MFCC value, uh, and the last column would be the label. So, uh, it takes a while to convert uh, a wave file to MFCC. So, while you are running, uh, you, while you are in the testing phase, you uh, like you would want not want to convert everything into uh, MFCC. So, just let's for now do the first three wave files so that way we have a smaller set smaller working set and like the testing time would be i mean the debugging time would be much more faster and shorter it's taking longer than usual While it's getting printed, let's um, move forward and create a data frame, right? So, how we would do that? Um, we would be having the data 
and p dot so what we want to do is we want to stack yes and no on top of each other right so one good way to do that is uh, using that v stack and we want to stack our uh, yes data and no data on top of each other right so so if the shape of this was the uh, so now we have three entries and each entry is of size 41 so the the shape of this would be 3 cross 40 same goes for this new data would this would also be 3 cross 40 so if you stack them on top of each other like vertical is the v stand uh, for vertical or uh, it the shape would be a yes data and a no data uh, on uh, stacked vertically so the shape would be 6 cross 41 right so finally it finished so as you can see one is being appended at the very end and these are the 40 uh, uh, 40 values right so you can play with the uh, data to see um, how how you would want that kind of data okay so now now that we have the data uh, in there we would want to uh, reformat it to x the training data and uh, the testing data right for uh, our algorithm to test right so uh, for that there is a very good uh, package from in SK learn scikit learn it's model selection yes import train test split yes so what this train test split does it it takes in the, an argument of uh, I mean uh, the ratio in which you want to split the data uh, and it uh, shuffles the data and returns the trains training set and the testing set right so let's see how you would do this okay uh, let's remove the print so once you have the data you also want to remove this it's not no longer required so we have s train x train x test y train y test equal to train test split oh uh, okay so for, for this train test uh, train test split uh, what we need to pass in is the x values and the y values so uh, since our data uh, array already has the x and y concatenated concatenated uh, we would want to use those uh, um, uh, specific columns to get in that kind of uh, data right so let's first visualize the uh, shape of the data So as you can see, it's 60, 6, 6 uh, cross 41. So 6 rows for 41 columns. That's what we wanted. Uh, now what we want is uh, the first 40 columns as the X data and the last column as the Y data, right? So how we can do this is using array slicing. Uh, to get everything but the last uh, value you can slice it like this let's see the shape see as you can see it slice down uh, the last co column so 
similarly we could uh, just get the minus uh, last col column using that minus one so we'll be using the test train, train split let's delete this for now uh, so x would be actually let's keep it to have it as a ref reference data comma minus one and data we would have just the last column in there and we would have test so the size we want to keep is uh, the, the split we want to have is two third of data as a training data and one third of the data as test data right so 0.33 right so test size would be like one third of the total size right so it doesn't matter that's again in hyper parameter we could do um, <coughs> right so just to make sure we have the right uh, shape so train equal to x train dot reshape minus 1 comma 40 uh, so what this does is takes in the uh, minus 1 is a it's just kind of a placeholder to tell how many number of entries are there so that would be the number of training data and we would want uh, 40 columns in there right so that is that uh, you would have x test equal to so we'll do that this for everything just so that it makes uh, so that we have our expectations right so x test is there then y train is there so it would be y Uh, sorry, train dot reshape. Uh, so what would be the shape of this y? It would be minus one comma. So this since we have only one column in there, uh, it would be minus one comma one. Same goes for test. Just making sure uh, we have. let's make sure we have the shapes right okay so oh, what is this oh I see where is this 6 comma 40 getting printed oh this is this prepaid it's okay so now that we have this uh, thing in here um so we have this data uh, processed and uh, ready to be passed in, ready to be fed it into a model um, so just for checking whether we did our we, we, we did the right job or not with the data and how this data would perform on a re, uh, on on any uh, neural net network architecture let's just create a uh, sample model thing and then model uh, i'm just going to see so you can use any uh, model uh, to test out your data i'm going to use a very quick model for neural network uh, using the keras library um, so what all things it requires is i think it needs let's just first start with creating a model right so model equal to tf dot 
Keras. Oh, so this is an optional step. Uh, you can skip this step uh, and just visualize the uh, data. Uh, you can uh, proceed with using your own uh, model instead of this Keras a neural network model that I'm using here. So uh, since it's very quick, I can. And it's very easy to understand as well. So I'm just going to show it anyways. So layers dot input layer and input shape takes input shape equal to so our input shape would be this 40 comma uh, right so we are going to give in training x train as in training data and the first very first entry shape is 40 comma 1 right so that's what we need to feed in here so it would be 40 comma df dot keras dot layers dot dense 1 28 activation equal to tf dot we are going to use the ralu function if you're not sure what that is or uh, don't worry about it it's just uh, just an activation function I mean uh, uh, a non-linear function uh, and the output of the new uh, neural layer so also we are going to let's use dropout just in case we want like a good efficiency good regularization so dropout is a regularization method we'll talk about that in uh, uh, details in some other video so this is 0 0.2 so uh, this 0 0.2 is the key probability i guess so uh, drop probability and then uh, we have the when did the yes so let's just have the final layer uh, which will be tn Keras. It's just the single layer that we are using with 128 neurons uh, and the final layer would be in our case it would be um, this 0 1 point right so it would be 1 and activation we would want is Softmax. Um, ideally, uh, so, since there are two classes that we want to uh, classify, you would use one hot vector formation, right? So, what I mean by that is uh, we have used label, which is uh, you know, one by one uh, data set, right? So, if you have, let's, let's, uh, discuss what that one hot means so what if it means so let's say you have label equal to one then label equal to two and then label equal to three so instead of having a single dimension one by one uh, back, uh, input label as one on two and three uh, the recommended way to do is uh, have a one cross three vector 
so each position uh, indicates uh, whether that uh, label is true or not so one is true and zero is false so for position one we keep one as true and rest of the values will be zero similarly it would be zero comma one comma zero and for this it is zero comma zero sorry zero one so as you can see it's uh it's called one hot it's just because uh only one particular value in the whole vector will be on at a particular time the rest of the values will be zero so this is a one one hot vector representation since we are just uh, playing with the toy data and we are using just the two cases of yes and no or uh, we can uh, get away with having just this label as one cross one one and zero and so that is that so we have the size the output size of one in the output neural network and after we have this model uh, the next step would be to compile the model with so compile so um, keras is a high uh, level layer higher even higher layer than uh, on top of tensorflow uh, and you can just use this uh, the apis that it gives or uh, to specifying what kind of optimizer you are going to use what what would be the like loss uh, what type of loss you want and what kind of matrix you want to analyze right so if you want to test something out very quickly uh, you know, this is certainly a good way to do that right so if you don't want any like much more finer control over what you want to um, categorical cross entropy And the matrix we want is accuracy, right? So now comes the good part where we model dot. So we fit in the data. Train and we so this is the cow fitting that I was telling, right? So let's pass in X train, Y train, X test, Y, Y test, right? And Let's keep it simple for now. E box equal to five for now. Okay. We can since we are just testing out the um, data first. Uh, let's keep it five, and then we can improve. Or we can increase as and when we are ready. So we we need to now test the model. So it's called model dot evaluate. Evaluate yes, and you pass in the X test. X test. I'm hoping I'm not making any mistake. Y test, and then oh, you what you want is train loss and train. Oh, sorry. Test loss and test accuracy, right? So this is testing. Loss, test accuracy equal to it. Right? So this would be what that is getting uh, spitted out by this evaluate function, and then you can print accuracy equal to dot format. And then you have to 
just accuracy right this is the test accuracy just keep it that and then use this and then model down in here to do me and then model it's just copy the so that is our toy function to test out whether we passed in our data correctly or not so how good our data is just to see that so certainly that is not the scope of this of what we are trying to do but this just the testing part let's see let's run it and see so just notice that we are using the three uh, rows for each data so you don't expect to see high accuracy As you can see, uh, somehow I got the warnings in there. We can ignore those warning for now. Warnings for now. But as you can see, it's training. The test accuracy we got is 0 0.5. So it's 50%, which is not that bad, given that we have a very small training data. And we also trained over like just five epochs. So let's train it over like full data set and even increase the number of epochs, right? So instead of 5, let's have it as 50. Let's see what kind of test accuracy we get. very long because it's reading each and every um, uh, wave files in this particular you know, data set that we have one good thing to do would be to read only read this wave file once and as and when you are testing it and converting it to mfcc format uh, save those wave files into that uh, into some text file and then read those that processed mfcc formats uh, then on and so that way uh, you would save on uh, reading and converting steps uh, but uh, you would certainly want to play with uh, different uh, um, audio processing format so mfcc is one of them there are several others uh, feel free to uh, look into what all other data uh, what, what all other uh, conversion methods are available mfcc is widely used uh, and widely accepted uh, play with this and an mfcc you could certainly uh, play with the wave file itself like chopping off the wave files to remove the silent uh, silence part and all so uh, that's something you could uh, do to improve your model accuracy so it's data processing uh, also you can visualize to see how your data 
uh, looks like after processing before processing uh, how your data is uh, there are uh, very good uh, modules available uh, in python pack so, uh, i mean very good packages available in python uh, which can even detect the sound activity so you could uh, process your data accordingly and it's bound to have better accuracy so still running so yeah yes so we have the output here so you can see straining over several epochs so accuracy going up uh, with each and every epoch i see it's going around 90 percent for training yeah so for training we have uh, around 90 percent accuracy and for testing it's it's again very good it's 88 percent which is very good ideally you would also want to see whether your training and test data has any overlap or not so you don't want your data to overfit and all right so um, that's something to keep in mind uh -huh. okay uh, so that's it on uh, audio processing uh, for neural networks or for any machine learning algorithm I mean. okay. thank you very much